Our guest today on the interview is the author Hamid Abdel Samad. He's one of Germany's fiercest critics of Islam and he says too that Chancellor Merkel has got it wrong when she says that Islam belongs to Germany. Hamid Abdel Samad, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on the interview at Deutsche Welle. And I'd like to say a very warm welcome too to our international audience. Now, Hamid Abdel Samad, you, uh, you grew up in Egypt and your father was an imam in a, in a small Egyptian village quite close to Cairo. I'd like you to take us back to that time and tell me about your earliest memories of growing up as a Muslim. I grew up, as you mentioned, in a conservative Islamic family. I uh, was learning the Quran by heart until I was 12 years old, between 4 and 12 years old. I was learning the Quran by heart and I was brought up in a very conservative way like many young Egyptians in these uh, surroundings. When you say in a very conservative way, was that something that you, that you warmed to or was that something forbidding for you as a young child? It was something forbidden. I, uh, you, you just have to imagine how a child could learn the Quran by heart between 4 and 12. It means actually, besides school, six more hours per day memorizing the Quran uh, and learning, which means that you didn't have a real childhood. You have to be committed to the Quran. But it, it, it means that you learned to appreciate the beauty of the Quran. I did. I mean, the Quran has very beautiful sides. I like the language so much. It's very emotional, very powerful, and very poetic um, parts of it. Um, and I don't regret learning the Quran by heart. It helps me now to deal with the Quran from a critical point of view. Mm -hmm. Are you still a Muslim today? I don't define myself through religion, not in a positive sense and not in a negative sense. I don't say I'm a Muslim, I don't say I'm an ex-Muslim. I don't say I'm a believer, I don't say I'm an uh, unbeliever. I'm a human being and I want to push that first. And I wish that people who are dealing with the issue of religion, that will put their religion back and push the human being first so that we can come to common grounds. Mm -hmm. You're sounding very relaxed as you talk about your belief there, but I, and I'm a little bit surprised because I know that a fatwa was issued calling for your death in Egypt and you have been living under police protection. I want, are you still living under police protection? Yes. I mean, I have to be relaxed, otherwise I cannot work, I cannot think, I cannot write. Um, I know that there are plenty of crazy people out there who maybe want to see me dead. But I try to imagine the world to be a rational world. And I try to address... But it's, it's not. It's, it's not, not a not, rational it's world. It's not, but um, as a writer, I have to take care. If I will allow fear to come in, I have to modify every sentence I write. I write. And I live from the freedom. I left Egypt to live in freedom. I left Egypt to say what I think freely. And I don't want those powers from the Middle Ages to hunt me, even in Europe or the United States, and try to uh, silence me. I refuse this logic. Therefore, I try to act naive and think that everyone is rational, and I'm writing these books to rational people. Okay, and the, the people who may or may not be hunting you, as you put it, the reason is because you have been a very controversial figure in their eyes. You've made some very controversial statements about Islam. You've written a number of books about Islam. The latest, which is now being published, is called... It's difficult to translate the German title, but I'm going to say The Case Against Mohammed. Yes, I, I like this. I mean, okay, I you have, have a translation been, for, been, the, I've for been the searching. Title. I've been searching indeed for an English translation and I didn't know how to put it. I was thinking of the trial of Muhammad, okay. but you put it in a more gentle way, the case against Muhammad. Good. I we, love that. We have a title for the book. And that, I mean, another of your books the, prior to that was Islamic Fascism. That's very emotive. You will understand that, yeah? Um, what exactly is the problem that you have with Muhammad? Is it that he was a man of religion and a warrior? The problem, I don't have a personal problem with Muhammad. The problem You've written a I whole have, book about your yes, problem with Muhammad. Yes. Uh, the problem with Muhammad is the position of Muhammad in our today's life, in the 21st century. Um, 
I don't criticize only what he did back 14 centuries ago, but his influence over millions, hundreds of millions of Muslims today worldwide. In today's world? Today's world. You have, world said, you have said Mohammed cannot set any kind of moral example for the 21st century. He cannot. He cannot. A person who was waging wars, who was living from waging wars. Muhammad, as he started to be a prophet, since he started to say that he's a prophet, didn't have a job. He, he, his money was coming from wars. Um, uh, uh, from uh, selling slaves. I he, cannot... He, before that, he had been a merchant. He, he, he had been a pr merchant until he became a prophet. Then it became his job to be a prophet and then to be a warrior. And he and his community were living from wars, we were living from the tax that he was imposing on unbelievers. He was uh, uh, living from uh, assaulting the, the, the tribes' car caravans moving between uh, uh, Mecca and uh, Syria. Um, I cannot consider a person to be a role model who was married to nine women at the same time. I cannot have a person as a role model who was executing hundreds of war prisoners who surrendered to him in the same day. Um, I cannot have somebody as a role model who, who married a six years old girl while he was over 50 years old. You clearly believe that Islam in the 21st century needs to be reformed, needs to be modernized. Will it be modernized? I don't believe Islam can reform itself. I don't believe in the reformability of Islam. I believe in the reformability of the thinking of Muslims. That's how it is. You cannot screw the Quran until it will fit to our time, but you can convince people that these verses of the Quran, the good ones and the bad ones, are to be read in the context of the seventh century. Before doing that, we have to forget the idea that Quran is the last word of God sent to the human beings. This is the, the serious problem of the Quran, not what is written in the Quran, but the position of the Quran in our today's society. Just like Muhammad, it's not what he said, said or did back then, but the power he is having today as a role model. And if we can put those two things aside, Muhammad and the Quran, to bury them back into the age they belong to. Then we can talk about the reformability of thinking. Then we can interpret the verses in a modern way. But as long as they are from God, who am I, who are you, to come and screw and correct God? This is the big question. Of course, for many people, many Muslims around the world, for millions and millions of Muslims, Muhammad is a role model in the 21st century. And included in that, that number are the many millions of Muslims living here in Germany. Angela Merkel, at the beginning of the year, came out and made a statement. She said, Islam belongs to Germany. And you came out in response to that and you said, Frau Merkel, you've got it wrong. I mean, Angela Merkel, all she was doing was saying to, the, to, to Muslims in Germany, you are part of our society, you are welcome in this society with your religion. What's wrong with that? It wouldn't have been wrong if she said Muslims are part of Germany. I'm a Democrat and uh, I believe in the freedom of belief. Everyone can practice his religion uh, the way he uh, wishes, uh, but there is a problem when you identify Muslims with Islam one-to-one -one. because when Frau Merkel is saying Islam is a part of Germany so is Sharia or can Sharia be a part of Germany Sharia is a part of Islam Muhammad is the core of Islam is Muhammad part of Germany after all what we know about him his wars the way he was dealing with women and uh, the way he was dealing with unbelievers. Of course, all these things that you talk about, you talk about Islam as though it's an anachronism, a thing of history. Uh, but th these kind of quibbles, I might say, they would apply to other religions as well. Yes, but which are the Christian country in the world which is having its law today according to the Bible? Which is the uh, Christian country today which is burning? But not Germany. Which G is Germany burning, is a country is that is run according to the rule of law. 
And if people commit some of the acts that you've been talking about, that will go against the law. But and they which will Islam be then is a part, which Islam law. is a part of Germany. Jihad is a part of Islam. Sharia is a part of Islam. The glorification of Muhammad in the education is a part of Islam. By the way, is a part of the Islam preached in German mosques. So then it's not helpful at all to come and say Islam is a part of Germany. It's not the job of a it's politician. A changing, it's a changing picture, though, as you well know. Yes, but it is, it is not the job of a politician to rehabilitate a religion or to make it a part uh, of a society or to dismiss it's it. It's about engaging it's about the religion people. in a discussion. It is about the people. Engage the people. Create jobs for the people. Uh, create a better education for Muslims in Germany. But don't say Islam is a part of Germany because nobody profits from that more than the conservative Muslim organizations who will come and say, okay, then I want to be just like the German churches. I want taxes from the state. I want to have influence over the media. I want to have influence over the education. And then you are selling the secular state to the conservatives. On a lighter note, and to finish off, I'd like to, we, we traditionally have three uncompleted sentences and I'd like you to complete them, if possible. If there's one thing I have learned in my life, it is? To appreciate freedom. When I think of Egypt, I? I have a crying eye and a laughing eye. If I were to meet Angela Merkel, I would say? Again, from Merkel, you've got it all wrong. <laughs> Hamid Abdel Samad, thank you very, very much for joining us here on the interview on Deutsche Welle today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.